Hi everyone, my name is George Chen and I'm a product marketing manager for MPS. And today I am with Dee Han, who is the systems application manager at MPS for isolated products. Today we'll be discussing MPS DC fast charging station solutions. I would like to thank Avnet Selka for this invitation to this webinar series. We're looking forward to continuous cooperation moving forward. Here is a quick overview of what we'll be discussing today. First, we'll take a quick overview of charging infrastructure. Then we'll discuss DC fast charging station block diagram. Next, I will go over the MPS solutions for charging infrastructure. D will talk about designing a resonant LLC power supply. And lastly, we'll have a concluding word. Here's a quick overview of EV charging infrastructure. For L1 and L2 stations, these stations provide AC power to charge an electric vehicle and generally take eight plus hours to fully charge an EV. L1 chargers charge at three kilowatts or less, meaning a car can be charged to drive three to 16 kilometers per every hour of charging. L2 chargers on the other hand are rated for three kilowatts all the way up to 22 kilowatts. This is equivalent to 16 to 40 kilometers of range per hour of AC power. The last charging station is the DC fast charging station. These charging stations can charge an EV battery from 10% all the way up to 90% within 18 minutes, depending on the power rating between 50 kilowatts all the way up to 400 kilowatts today and the maximum power that the vehicle can be charged at. Here is an overview of all the plugs that we see used globally. In the China market, the GBT standard is used while CCS1 and CCS2 are very popular currently in Europe, North America, as well as South Korea. In Japan for fast charging, they use the Chatamo standard. The CCS1 and CCS2 use the similar plugs for the AC charging, with the Menicus plug being used for AC charging in Europe and J1772 being used in North America, South Korea, and Japan. To achieve CCS1 and CCS2 DC fast charging speeds, two large wires are added for DC power delivery. Tesla uses the same connector for AC charging as well as DC charging in all regions except for Europe where Teslas are outfitted with a CCS2 plug. The system we see here is for a DC fast charging station. This block diagram shows the conversion from a three phase AC voltage into a 250 volt to 800 volt DC voltage that is used to charge electric vehicles. A DC fast charging station typically contains several of these subunits, which can range anywhere from 30 kilowatts to 75 kilowatts. Multiple of these subunits are put in parallel in order to achieve 250 kilowatts, 350 kilowatts, or even higher amounts of power. The DC fast charging system is generally comprised of two conversion stages as well. The first stage is a power factor correction stage, which converts the AC voltage from the power grid into an intermediate DC voltage bus between 800 volts up to 1300 volts. A three phase, three level rectifier or inverter topology is commonly used in the PFC stage. This particular topology refers to a three level converter that can interface with a three phase power grid. The next stage is the DC-DC stage, where an isolated DC-DC converts the intermediate voltage to the target voltage that is specific to the battery being charged. This battery voltage can be anywhere from 200 volts all the way up to 800 volts, depending on if it is charging a plug-in hybrid or a fully electric vehicle. LLC and phase shift full bridge converters are common topologies for the DC-DC stage. MPS offers several products such as isolated gate drivers, gate driver power supplies, isolated power modules, and current sensors for DC fast charging stations. Some of the biggest challenges for this application are maximizing power density, reducing cost, and reducing solution size. MPS is heavily investing into electrification and green energy products. Our solutions are compatible with silicon carbide FETs and we continue to create innovative, integrated solutions that can reduce component count and lower total solution costs. 
our solutions can enable both 400 volt and 800 volt architectures with our proprietary process. MPS has over 800 plus automotive products today with over 12 years of experience in the automotive industry and over 1.8 billion units of automotive semiconductors shipped. We have an industry leading quality record of 0.06 BPPM levels for automotive products. Our products are designed to help systems run cooler with higher performance and integration. The isolated products from MPS are all created with capacitive isolation technology. MPS has a big focus on electrification, including onboard chargers, traction inverters, high voltage DC, DC systems, as well as for grid infrastructure charging systems for DC fast charging stations. The isolated products from MPS support various isolation requirements to maximize system safety level and offer gate driver power supplies that can switch all the way up to 10 megahertz. All the isolated gate drivers, signal isolators, and isolated amplifiers use capacitive isolation technology, and our products are compliant to several different safety specifications, including UL1577, PDE 088417, as well as CQC per the GB4943.1 standard. This slide showcases the MPS digital isolator roadmap, as well as isolated power modules that can be used to power the digital isolators. On the left-hand side, we have low input voltage power modules with integrated transformers. And on the right-hand side, we have our digital isolator family, the MP279XX family. The way that the digital isolators are named is that the last two digits denotes the number of forward and reverse channels. The MP27931, for example, is three forward channels and one reverse channel. On the other hand, the MP27942 is a six channel digital isolator with four forward channels and two reverse channels. On the left-hand side, for the digital isolator power supplies, the MID means that this is a power module with integrated transformer. The next two digits, the 1W or 02W, denotes the number of watts. So 1W stands for one watt, while 02W stands for 0.2 watts. The next two digits denote the input and output voltage. So 0505 is five volt input, five volt output while 0503 is a five volt input with a three volt output. Here, let's take a look at the MID XXW0505A five volt to five volt isolated power module family. The greatest feature of this device is that it comes with an integrated transformer. This product has variants for either a 3.3 volt input or a five volt input and provides a tiny isolated 3.3 volt or 5 volt output rail that can be used for powering digital isolators, RS-485, CAN, or for industrial automation applications as well. This device comes in a small SOIC 16 wide body chip scale package and, keep, and can meet isolation requirements up to 3 kilovolts while maintaining 0.5% load regulation and 1.5% line regulation. We have several different versions of this device for 0.2 watts, 0.4 watts, 0.6 watts, and all the way up to one watt to power all of your isolated power needs. This device does meet CISPR 32 Class B specifications as well. The next device is the MP279XX family, which is our four to six channel digital isolator family. As I mentioned earlier, the last two digits of this family denote the number of forward and reverse channels. This device can work with data rates up to 150 megabits per second with a lower 20 megabit per second option available as well. This device can meet either 5 kV RMS isolation or 2.5 kV RMS isolation and is available in a small SYC 16 wide body package. This device is made for signal isolation between MCU and sensors and can be used for applications such as e-meters, motor control, and spy isolation and any sort of other signal isolation requirements between MCU and sensors. Next, let's take a look at our isolated gate driver and power supply roadmap. On the left-hand side, we have various isolated power supplies. The MPQ18913 is an LLC half-bridge transformer driver for biasing isolated gate drivers. The two MID products are power modules for, 
for biasing isolated gauge drivers with integrated transformer. On the right hand side, we have our single channel isolated gauge driver, as well as dual channel isolated gauge drivers available. The MPQ18811 is our single channel device. And on the bottom, we have the MPQ18831, the MPQ18851, and the MPQ18871, which are dual input half bridge gate drivers, dual independent input or PWM input half bridge. Let's take a look at the MPQ18811 isolated single channel gate driver. This device has isolation all the way up to 5 kV RMS with a common mode transit immunity greater than 100 kilovolts per microsecond. This device can have up to 30 volts of output drive supply with various UVL options between five volts all the way up to 15 volts. We have two different output configurations available, including a single output with Miller clamp or split outputs. This device comes with a high six amp source and 10 amp sync peak current output capability and a 40 nanosecond typical propagation delay. We have both narrow body SOIC8 as well as wide body SOIC8 available, and we are still working on an SOIC14 narrow body package that has extra protection features such as desaturation detection, as well as an adjustable soft turnoff after desaturation fold. These products come in industrial as well as AECQ100 qualified grades. The next products we have here is the MPQ18831, 51, and 71 isolated dual channel gate driver family. This device has a wide driver bias range from six and a half volts to 30 volts and has several different UVLO options to enable more flexibility in using different types of FETs, such as IGBTs, silicon carbide, GAN, and other silicon FETs. The source and sync peak current of four amps and eight amps allows usage of higher power FETs with faster switching edges and higher efficiency. The 100 kilovolt per microsecond common mode transient immunity allows for faster switching without affecting signal integrity. The MPQ18831 offers a dual input half bridge configuration. The 51 offers dual independent drivers, while the 71 is our PWM input half bridge. This device is pin to pin compatible with several other isolated gate drivers to help increase supply continuity in the current environment. Our standard packages include a narrow body SOIC16, a wide body SOIC16, a wide body SOIC14 with 3.3 millimeter creepage, as well as a 5 by 5 millimeter LGA13 package as well. This product comes in both industrial and automotive qualified grades and has an operating junction temperature range from negative 40 C to 150 C. If we take a look at all the different packages, the SYC16 wide body and SYC14 wide body can offer 5 kV RMS isolation, while the narrow body package offers 3 kV RMS isolation. For an even smaller package, we have the LGA13 that can meet isolation requirements all the way up to 2.5 kV RMS. Next, we have the MID6W2424A, which is a 6 watt. 24 to 24 volt isolated module with a one to one turns ratio transformer. As I mentioned earlier, the MID stands for a power module with integrated transformer. The 6W denotes six watts and the 2424 input output voltage denotes that this has a one to one turns ratio transformer inside of it. We also have two other tr transformer turns ratios available. The MID 6W1224 is a one to two turns ratio and the MID6W1524 is a one to 1.6 turns ratio. This device has an input voltage range from five volts up to 30 volts and can survive transients all the way up to 50 volts as well with a host of protection features, including short circuit protection, over current protection, and over temperature protection. This device is available in a small LGA 10 by 10 millimeter package with an operating temperature range of negative 40 C to 105 C. As you can see from the typical circuit diagram, this device is made to have split outputs of 20 volts and negative four volts for biasing silicon carbide, IGBTs, and can be used in industrial automation as well as grid protection relay projects. Let's take a look at the MPQ18913, which is a 30 volt half amp LLC transformer driver for isolated bias supplies. This device is specifically made to be used as an IGBT or silicon carbide gate driver bias, 
as you can see that it is used to create a 20 and negative four volt output in the application circuit. This device has a five volt to 30 volt input voltage range and can survive surges up to 50 volts. And this uses an isolated LLC resonant converter topology. The great thing about this device is that it can switch up to 10 megahertz and is often used as a replacement for flybacks to achieve higher isolation and smaller solution size with a higher switching frequency. Since LLCs have been historically hard to design, this device employs an automatic resonant frequency detection to help simplify that design and offer spread spectrum for EMI reduction as well. This product is made for designs all the way up to six watts and in some cases 10 watts with higher input voltages and is available in a tiny QFN10 two millimeter by 2.5 millimeter package with wettable flanks. Here we have a sample evaluation board for the MPQ-18913 LLC resonant isolated by supply. The evaluation board shown here uses a planar transformer with windings directly on the PCB to decrease the total solution size, but we have a traditional bobbin transformer evaluation board available as well. On the right hand side, we see the efficiency curve from 21.6 volts in to 26.4 volts in while maintaining an output voltage of 24 volts at a 1.33 megahertz switching frequency. We can achieve an excellent peak efficiency of about 87.5% with a full load efficiency right around 85%. Here we have the MID1W2424A, which is a one watt or two watt 24 volt isolated power module with an integrated transformer. This device has a five volt to 30 volt input voltage range and can survive transients all the way up to 50 volts and offers two different isolation voltage options, including three kV as well as five kV. This device due to the 2424A at the ending means that it does you have a one-to-one -one transformer ratio and it offers 60% efficiency with full load. The great thing about this device is that we have a very minimal isolation capacitance of eight picofarads. And this also has soft start over current protection, over voltage protection, over temperature protection, as well as a fault indicator. This device is ACQ100 qualified and has an operating temperature spec of negative 40 Celsius to 125 Celsius in a tiny chip scale SOIC16 wide body package when height is a real concern. The applications for this device include IGBT, and silicon carbide gate driver biases, as well as EV DC fast charging stations, traction inverters, and onboard chargers. If we take a look at the PCB footprint analysis of our isolated bias supply using an LLC topology versus a flyback, we can achieve up to 40% smaller solution size. With the 18913, the transformer is 11 by 6 millimeters versus 9 by 10 millimeters for a PSR flyback transformer. This results in a total solution size of 109 millimeters squared versus 180 millimeters squared for the total solution size of the PSR flyback. And we were able to save five components as well. The great thing about a smaller solution size is it often results in cost savings as well, which we'll see when we take a look at our bomb cost analysis. Here we can see that the 18913 LLC resin topology is able to achieve much less high voltage and low voltage caps compared to a PSR flyback. And the other area where a lot of money is saved is in the transformer cost. Due to the higher switching frequency, we can use a 13 microhenry 11 by six millimeter transformer versus a 30 microhenry nine by 10 millimeter transformer. In terms of the number of components, we need a lot less diodes compared to what a PSR flyback may need and ultimately can provide a 46% lower bomb cost. As you can see in this comparison table, the bomb cost for the 18913 is 59 cents plus the cost of the IC, while the PSR flyback is $1.10 plus the cost of the IC. When comparing the cost of the IC, the 18913 and the PSR flyback are very similar in price. Earlier, we showed both a discrete gate driver power supply implementation with the 18913, but we also have the MID 1W2424, which is the gate driver power supply solution with an integrated transformer. If you look at the amount of total area, the discrete solution is actually slightly smaller at 120 millimeters squared, while the module solution requires 150 millimeters squared. The total area for the discrete solution is actually small in the X to Y dimension, 
But if height is a big constraint, you may want to consider the MID 1W2424, which has an extremely compact height of 2.65 millimeters versus an external transformer, which may be nine millimeters in height or more. So the main advantage we have for this module solution is in the total height requirement by integrating the transformer into a SOIC 16 wide body chip scale package. Let's take a look at some of the EMI benefits of a soft switching LLC topology for a flyback. On the left hand side, the switch node exhibits no overshoot or ringing, while the flyback provides a lot of overshoot and ringing on the switch node, which can be very difficult to filter out. This slide shows the input voltage waveform with the MPQ-18913 operating at 21.7 megahertz. Due to the soft switching topology, there is no coupled switching noise on the input rail, while for the flyback on the right side, you see that there's switching noise that has been coupled onto the input. To summarize everything together, with the 18913 LLC resonant topology, we're able to achieve a much higher switching frequency, up to 10 megahertz, this results in a smaller transformer size, 13 microhenry versus 30 microhenry. Another big advantage for the LLC topology is that with leakage inductance, leakage inductance is utilized as part of the resonant tank in an LLC resonant topology, while with a PSR flyback, leakage inductance induces voltage spikes and extra losses. Another benefit for LLC topologies is that the isolation voltage can, that can be achieved can be very high while achieving a very low interwinding capacitance as well. For the LLC, we can achieve a 5 kV isolation voltage while keeping isolation capacitance very low at around 6 picofarads or less. The most optimized designs we have made have been as low as 2 picofarads, while PSR flybacks have a hard time achieving greater than 1.5 kV while achieving the isolation capacitance very low. Generally for flybacks, the isolation capacitance can be anywhere from 13 picofarads all the way up to 40 picofarads. Another benefit for the LLC topology due to the soft switching nature is that it has much better EMI emissions compared to a PSR flyback. And then from a total solution size perspective, you also get a smaller total solution size with a lower bomb cost. Next, I'll hand it over to Dee to talk about the design of an LLC gate driver power supply. Hi, this is Dee. So isolated gate drivers are key parts of the power converter activating the switches, uh, which drive power com the com drive the power conversion. These gate drivers take control signal from the primary side or the low voltage side, then turns on or turns off the power switch on the secondary side or high voltage side by sourcing or sinking currents to the gate of those power switches. Of course, it provides an isolation barrier between the high voltage side and low voltage side. As we can see, the gate driver do need power sources on the secondary side, which is, which is illustrated by VDD on this diagram. So isolated power supplies are required for the gate drive circuits. Here in the, in the red block diagram is showing the isolated power supply. It takes the input voltage from primary side and generate the isolated output voltage on the secondary side. Obviously an isolation barrier has to be pre present between the primary and secondary side inside the power supply. And that's usually provided by a transformer. In EV industry, we are seeing some inter interesting trends that put more requirements on the transformer design of these isolated power supplies. First of all, the battery voltage and the DC bus voltage in the electric vehicles are gradually transitioning from 400 volt to 800 volt levels in order to facilitate higher power density track and drive and boost up the overall drivetrain efficiency. But with 800 volt DC bus, we will need a transformer to withstand higher isolation voltage. 
Secondly, the industry is gradually shifting from silicon, silicon IGBT to silicon carbide MOSFETs in this, their converter designs to take advantage of the high speed and low loss features of silicon carbide devices. But on the other hand, high switching DVDT operation of silicon carbide will drive a lot more current across the isolation barrier compared to the IGBT. The noise current can potentially disturb the normal operation of the controllers and sensitive circuits on the low voltage side. So we will need isolation capacitance of the transformer to be as small as possible. Here we are showing an example. Assuming each transformer has 20 picofarad capacitance between primary and secondary side, which is very typical for an off-the-shelf transformer. And the silicon carbide MOSFET switching slew rate is assumed to be 100 volt per nanosecond. Then the common mode current across isolation boundary will be 1 amp, which can be obviously uh, destructive. So how do we deal with the new requirement for the transformers? The first thing uh, is the interwinding capacitance. Um, the interwinding capacitance can be compared to a parallel plate capacitor. Since the insulation material and area of coil offer less design freedom, the best way to reduce this capacitor is by separating the two windings, which means increasing the thickness of the insulation layer. As we can see from the equation, the capacitance is inversely proportional to the distance between two winding coils. So we need to increase that uh, distance to reduce the capacitance. Meanwhile, by increasing that distance, we also can increase the isolation uh, distance, hence increase the isolation voltage of the transformer. However, uh, this does come at a cost. Increasing the isolation thickness reduce the interwinding capacitance, but also worsen the magnetic coupling between the two sets of windings which means uh, the leakage inductance will increase. Therefore, designers will have to find a way to deal with this unavoidably large leakage inductor. One of the most frequently used topology for this application is the flyback converter. Flyback converters behave like a back boost converter, but the inductor is split to enable isolation between the input and output. In this converters, efficiency is very closely linked to how tightly the primary and secondary inductors are coupled. The increased leakage inductance loosen the coupling, so the amount of energy which is transferred across the inductor will decrease. This will cause a large loss in efficiency and also forces the designer to select larger and more expensive components to accommodate the voltage spike created by the leakage inductor's resonance. For this reason, flyback converters are not the most ideal solution for high power designs. To illustrate a little bit more on how a flyback converter operates, when the switch turns on, the current will flow through the switch as well as the leakage inductance. Then when the switch is turned off, some power will store in the magnetizing inductance will be transferred to the secondary, hence to the output but the energy stored in the leaky inductance has to find a way to still 
but the current in the leakage inductance still has to find a way to flow somewhere that will cause a resonance between the leakage inductance and output capacitance of the switch, resulting in high voltage spikes across the switch. The switch node voltage spikes incre will increase the sw switching device rating, complicates snubber design and generate losses and lo noises. It also limits the maximum operating frequency. Larger the leakage, worse the performance the flyback will have. New technological development have led to the adoption of LLC converters as the most efficient topology for isolated gate drive power supplies. These converters are based on a resonant LLC tank, which has a magnetizing inductor for energy transfer, uh, as well as an additional capacitor and inductor whose purpose to make the tank resonant at a certain frequency. The converter uses this resonance to ensure high efficiency power conversion. The main benefit of the LLC converter is that the leakage inductance of the transformer can be used as the resonant inductance in the tank, eliminating the issue of efficiency loss or voltage spike that is associated with the flyback topology. This is why LLC converters are the best choice for powering isolated gate drivers. So here uh, I'll show an design example for the isolated power supply biasing silicon carbide fats. Here's a pro, uh, block diagram assuming the input voltage is coming from a 12 volt um, vehicle battery, then it will go through a boost stage to 29 volts. Then this regulated 29 volts will go through our LLC converter to generate, it, to generate the 20 plus 20 volt and minus four volts. Now in this diagram, we are assuming the input 12 volt is directly battery voltage, which is unregulated and can vary a lot during low dump and cold crank. If we have a pre-regulated rail, then this boost, boost converter won't be necessary. And in, in this diagram, we are using one LC IC to drive one transformer with three output windings, like shown on the right. But to minimize the cross coupling between different outputs, we can also choose to use one IC to drive three different transformers, or we can choose to use three ICs to drive three different transformers depending on the designer's needs. We, in this design, we use bobbing with two slots, transformer bobbing with two slots to separate the primary and secondary winding. In this way, we achieve highest uh, isolation voltage as well as minimize the isolation capacitance. As you can see in this design, we are able to achieve a interwinding capacitance of less than one picofarad. So here we are showing the performance of this reference design board. As we can see, we're achieving pretty good load regulation on all three output rails. We're also achieving over 75 percent efficiency at the five watt load. Here comes some waveforms we measure on the 
reference design board. On the left hand side, we are showing the switch node waveform and transformer current waveform of the LRC topology. As you can see, the switch node waveform is very clean and achieving soft switching. As compared to a conventional flyback on the right, the switch node waveform is showing a lot of voltage spikes and ringing when the switch turns off, as I explained in the earlier slides. Here I'm showing, on the left, I'm showing the input voltage waveform of the LRC topology. As we can see, the input waveform shows very little noise, only some voltage ripples. But as compared to a competitor flyback design, the input voltage waveform shows great amount of voltage ringing and noise, which can pollute the input voltage rail. Thanks, Dee, for going over the theory on how a resonant LLC transformer driver functions and providing a design example to be able to achieve five kV RMS isolation while biasing three different silicon carbide FETs. MPS is invested in the electrification market with innovative solutions for onboard chargers, traction inverters, and charging stations with products such as digital isolators, low voltage power modules, isolated gate drivers, isolated power modules with integrated transformers, and LLC topology gate driver power supplies. Resin LLC supplies are a great way for biasing either IGBT or silicon carbide FETs to help increase power density in next generation charging station designs over traditional flyback with better performance and space and cost savings in the designs themselves. Keep looking out for new products from MPS as we continue to invest in isolated products that will continue to push electrification designs forward to achieve higher efficiency, higher power density, and smaller solution size. We are ex excited by the endless possibilities in the electrification market as adoption of electric vehicles has been increasing at an exponential rate worldwide driven by regulations to achieve carbon neutrality. We'd like to thank Abnet Silica for putting together this electrification webinar that covers charging station solutions and look forward to future events together. Thank you for taking the time to watch MPS DC Fast Charging Solutions today. Thank you all and I hope you all have a wonderful day.